Thank you so much. It's Mike Seidel reporting and we take a look at that area because there is still more snow to come where he's located, especially in Syracuse. Take a look where you see the purple colors. That's really going to pick up some of the higher amounts, but really widespread. A lot of places could still pick up about one to three inches of snow. It's just it's going to be in some of those locations where we pick up, say, about five to six additional inches. Here you can look at the system again. It's not a very fast moving system, and that's why it's been allowed to kind of dump some pretty significant amounts of snow both yesterday yesterday and will be the case for today. Now as we zoom in a little bit closer again, you'll kind of notice that travel is not going to be very easy on some of these interstates, especially 90 and 81, because not only do we have the snow coming down, but the visibility is incredibly poor. Watertown right now just a quarter of a mile. Syracuse not much better. We're still down to less than one mile visibility, and it's that wind that's helping to push a lot of that snow that you have already on the ground, and that's uh, being part of that poor visibility. So the radar as we push it forward again, notice as we go through the afternoon, a lot of this still going to be impacting at least until the early portions of the afternoon and through the evening rush hour. But Carl is actually taking a look. Yikes, <laughs> bundle up. Well, few things can disrupt a Thanksgiving vacation or a business trip as quickly as a delayed flight. And some of those airports run into trouble with Mother Nature far often more than others. Reynolds Wolf takes a look at the airports where your flight is most likely to be delayed. So we take a look at where the big travel problems may occur coming up this week because this is a big travel week. Now this line stretching from Detroit all the way to Minneapolis, the area in between, that is going to be your biggest area of concern as we take a look at Wednesday. So let's kind of zoom in and look at some of these locations. We will start around Detroit where we are expecting some rain showers on the southern side, but not out of the question for some of that upper portion of the state to start dealing with that mix of rain and snow, which again, not great for road conditions, especially when they're packed and you've got a lot of people there. Chicago also going to be dealing with some showers as well. So interstate 65, 94 and even 90 around the areas could have some impacts on it. Madison, Wisconsin again also dealing with some showers. So really up and down I-90 is not going to be a pleasant one. Even as you continue farther off to the north Minneapolis, Jackie looking at some snow showers for the day as well. All right, we, we are here in the lab with Carl Parker to kind of get the latest and some of the interesting phenomenon that's going to be dealing with this. First, notably, it's very slow moving. Yeah. This is not a fast mover. No doubt. I mean, that's a six hour loop and the thing has barely moved at all. Uh, what's also interesting is that you can see how the snow has developed well to the north of the Great Lakes there. And it's actually picking up a little bit of moisture from the Hudson Bay coming down here. So sort of preloading the air a little bit before it even gets to the Great Lakes. And then you've had this very strong wind and these really persistent uh, lake effect bands coming across New York. And that's slowly going to wind down over the next day or so, but not before it gives us an additional several inches there in central parts of New York around Syracuse, as well as uh, into the Adirondacks. And this is our forecast totals here for uh, New York State and also parts of northern New England. And then the next storm that's coming in is now in the west, and there are a lot of different parts to this storm, but you can see how snow is now spreading through the interior west. Uh, one interesting thing about this storm is it's not just going to be snow. And what we've got here is the low level temperatures. So everywhere that is in purple and sort of dark blue there, that's all where you have sub freezing temperatures. So it's all very cold across the Midwest. But you see that flow that is coming out of the southwest right in there. And there's warmer air to the south, but you can see how the clouds are kind of moving up from the southwest. So when we take a look at tomorrow morning and we've got the sub freezing temperatures in purple there at the surface, but then we're looking at temperatures that are above freezing at about 5,000 feet in blue, that flow coming up from the south, right in there is where you're going to have slightly warmer air overriding that sub-freezing air. And so as we look at a vertical profile of that, there's that layer of air that's above freezing, and then you've got that below freezing layer, very shallow layer at the surface. So rain is going to fall through that above freezing air and fall into the sub freezing air. And the result is that you're going to get some freezing rain, which shows up here as pink in this computer model. A little bit of that developing overnight, but it really starts to kick in, we think, tomorrow morning. So Twin Cities tomorrow morning could be a rough commute. And I would I would rather have anything other than oh, freezing that's rain. It's the, it's the yes. absolute worst. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much.